This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, a bedroom planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Yo, what's up? We are now at Ayontidal, and behind me here you see the uh, Volkswagen ID5 GTX. So, what is the difference between ID5 and ID4? Well, it's just a coupe version. So, you see, normally bigger number means bigger car, right? But here, bigger number means smaller car. So, it's just an ID4 but with the coupe version and it has a spoiler hmm. and i wonder how much more efficient is this one versus the id4 because the id4 doesn't have the best aerodynamics versus um the the brother was it the skoda enyaq so other than that i can show that in the back it looks just like the id4 we also have panorama roof i haven't opened it yet and then the back here is this gtx wait where's the button motorized lift gate and we have this sloping opening here, sloping truck. Everything else is the same. I'm going to do a banana box test to find out how much space we are losing by going the, uh, the ID5 versus ID4. And we are charging up now. So this time we have car scanner working. I can show you that the adapter is hooked up there. That's the OBD LX2 adapter. And then I use car scanner to see all the stats here. We are 100% now. We are about to finish soon. 200% and we will drive to, uh, 90 test first. I will actually have to switch over to eco mode here. Like this. Yeah, oh, great news. This is with the software three, the ID software. And we now have state of charge always visible in the instrument cluster. So thumbs up to Volkswagen. You know, I know that Volkswagen people are watching my videos and they probably did this based on my request. Hey, is it done? Is it done? Are we done? We're done, we're done, D-U-N. All right, we actually start the test with a little bit of rain, not too much. So uh, what's the temperature here? 19 degrees Celsius. And I can show the variables here. We have uh, yes, state of charge, uh, uh, display and BMS. And then the next one there is uh, power. And then we have voltage and amps. And then the speed reported by uh, something else, 89 you see, and this is 93. So this could be, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's the GPS speed because I checked GPS, it's supposed to be 90 now. And then we have some other values there, some temperatures and stuff. So uh, yes, so far so good. Now we're gonna measure uh, the weight of this car. Uh, by the way, here you see uh, when it's in use, it's like this. We have the power meter and region limits, uh, speed or there. Here we have the same screen, uh, slightly different layout here, this one. But uh, yes, uh, they haven't changed that much. The car is still white in the display, <laughs> but the real color is red. Oh. Okay, it was, that was okay comfort over the bridge gap in eco mode. You can, when you put the car in sport mode, it becomes harder. This one has the, the oh, yeah, yeah that, that is perfect, yeah, that's acceptable. Actually, feels even nicer and than the Model Y. Uh, yeah, they have, this is called the PDC, P, T, D, D, DCC, I think it's called. Yeah, the adaptive dampers. All right, ID4 GTX is 2360. Okay. What? Same. All right. Same but different. How is Mjolnir today? Oh, the windsock is hanging. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. no wind, perfect driving condition, like a ninja. We have this downhill now towards Brumendal. Let's try to coast. I'm gonna put the car in neutral. You see here, okay, now, now we start regening, right? Coasting, and then look at the speed here. This is, uh, I guess, very close to GPS speed. Let's see how fast this car picks up speed. Uh, this is an indication of uh, how efficient the drivetrain is and also how uh, how little drag we have. Oh, oh, it's picking up speed fast. But uh, some cars with uh, permanent magnet motors, they will have always a little bit of resistance. So, um, yeah, so it's not directly comparable uh, between the cars, but oh, wow, we're picking up speed. Oh, it's uh, <coughs> barely legal now. Okay, okay. I hope the bullet side is not watching my videos. Actually, they are, but uh, yes, just. Uh, it's in, in the name of science we do this. <laughs> oh, wow, 120. 
not too shabby. Yeah, you know, I get the impression that the MEB platform has very efficient drivetrain. Huh. Okay, nice. Let's see. You know what? I should hunker down be behind that uh, uh, Toyota here. Yeah, let's get some drafting behind it. Maybe I can pick up more speed. Oh, you... Ah, almost, almost. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -uh, let's get over here. <laughs> We're just sailing now. Remember to ABC. Always be coasting. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. We have to cruise at 90 again, so... We still have a higher speed than we're supposed to have uh, according to the cruising. Wow. You know, we should try, yeah, like, like just for fun, you know, not 100% not comparable, but maybe we should try to coast from the bottom of that uh, hill and then see when we hit 90. Yeah, let's do that. Huh? Just for fun, right? Uh, let's see now. Okay, 98. Okay, okay, getting close now. Almost at the tower here, the Mjus uh, Tornet. You see? Oh, 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 oh. There, there. Oh, wow. Awesome. All right, let's try the speaker system. So, this car is equipped with a Volkswagen sound system, which includes six speakers only, a 12 channel amplifier, a subwoofer, and a total power of 450 watts. But you see, uh, what is not just what, it depends what kind of what it is. So I'm an audiophile since the 90s, and I learned that you have the, the PMPO expression of what, which is like a very uh, optimistic way of expressing it. It stands for uh, peak music power output. Uh, you can get very high watt rating with PMPO, and then you have the DIN rating, which is more realistic. And then you also have the RMS rating, which is, I guess, the most honest way of expressing it. So uh, PMPO is like NEDC, and then DIN is like VLTP, and I guess RMS is like TBTP. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's listen here. Uh... This is an um, uncompressed file on a USB stick. High quality. It, it lacks that clarity that says high-end systems have. Also, this, this, the sound stage is not as, as defined. I mean, it's fairly clear, but almost feels a bit unnatural. Yeah, let me skip a little bit. All right, a little bit too much. Um, the bass, even though this this car has subwoofer, the bass lacks some some punch. It lacks the low, really low frequencies. I'm not sure how big the subwoofer is. I should have done my homework. Maybe it's just a. I mean, there are even six and a half inch subwoofers, but uh, it doesn't sound like an eight inch subwoofer. Wait, is that the, that's an, a BMW i4? Zoop. M50. Noise. But okay, uh, let me try next one. Uh, which one should it be? This one maybe? Oh, I missed Arctic Circle. Yeah, this is an Arctic Circle song. <laughs> Okay, let me try to skip a little bit here also. I mean, at least the bass is linear. It doesn't have any weird peaks, but I wish it was a little bit, a little bit punchier and a little bit deeper. And I think the problem with this car is the acoustics because it's somewhat large and they, they haven't. I mean, I think they haven't tuned the, the speakers against the, the the car. And you see, you have glass here. That's not good. You have you have some hard plastic here, semi hard plastic here. So you don't get the same studio uh, dead room effect like in an EQS, for example. Okay, there will be a bass now soon. Okay, very good, very good. 
I'll leave that part, but this song is good because the bass here, the bass drum has slightly higher frequency than, I don't know, I, I'm guessing it's about 150 hertz, which usually triggers rattling in the door speakers and uh, it's not uh, going to the subwoofer, wherever that one is. Okay, one last song. Yeah, it just, it just lacks that, that detail a little bit here. It's like... Oh, a nice bass. But it, okay, at least the bass is not as loose or boomy as the Tesla. So at least it has that, for, that level of firmness, but I just want to have it even firmer than that, even slightly punchier than that. But okay, so if I would give uh, this a score, I would probably still give it a 7, just like the, the Model Y. Uh, the Model Y has a minus and slightly looser bass, but the bass at least was a bit uh, deeper. Um, and also the Model Y seems a bit clearer, uh, everything. But this one at least has the firmness in the bass. So yes, 7 out of 10 then. We just finished one full lap now at Ayom Didal and uh, yeah, at the roundabout the car reported 180.7 kilometers. It's supposed to be 182, so this car underreports by 0.07%. So I'll correct for that. And then look here, the consumption right now is 157 watt hour per kilometer. That is better than the ID4 GTX, which had 160. Mm, well, actually, well, I'm not sure if this actually goes to 156 after the correction. So, yes, as expected, this car is slightly better, uh, probably because of aerodynamics, but the drivetrain should be the same. So, whereas right now we are down to 58%, which means we have to do another lap, and then we'll see. We are getting close to the end now, we have 14% left, and uh, I navigated to Ionity. Uh, this car does not preheat before uh, fast charging, so um, we can see it here also, uh, battery inlet and all that, so it's not doing anything. But um, yes, uh, let me see if I go home here. So this, the, the screen here tells me that I will arrive at low battery at arrival, but not how many percent. So uh, one weird thing is that if you look at the distance here, 364 kilometers, and versus the consumption, 156, and also versus the 14% we have left, it seems like we can get around 65 kilowatt hour only. This is weird because this is supposed to be an 82 kilowatt hour battery. And I measured many, many times before with other uh, ID4s, ID3s that you're supposed to get around 75 kilowatt hour, not 65 kilowatt hour. So the question is, is there something wrong with this car? Is the battery kaput? What the heck is it? Uh, software update? Now I can show you what happens if you don't touch the steering wheel. So the car is equipped with the ID light. So we have light on the dashboard here. So first warning is that we get some white flashing on the ID light and then it says take over steering. Then it turns red. This is like kit. Oh, and then it brakes hard. Auto steer still active. Brakes hard and pull my uh, belt, but and it starts slowing down. But I'm not sure what happened with the auto steer. It seems to also still. Oh, oh, oh okay, pull really hard now. <laughs> Just trying to wake me up. Okay, okay, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, that is approved. Yeah, that was awesome with the lights going on in the front here. We have arrived. Uh, here's the stats. And uh, this display claims 2%, but then according to uh, uh, car scanning, we have 1% left. Okay, let's plug it in. Ooh, look at the charging speed. Huh? 156 kilowatt. Wow, that's a new record. It used to be maximum 125 kilowatt. Hmm, all right. So it seems like we have a different battery or different software. I'm not sure. But this is charging way faster now. All right, we're on the high speed run now, the 120 test. So we will just drive north to Strandlich and back again. It's a 66 kilometer loop. Uh, it's 7.30 in the evening now. So hopefully we won't have too much traffic blocking our way. So let's see if we can get a clean run. 
So uh, yeah, the car feels quiet, just like I measured in the noise test that at high speed, even with some wind and stuff, uh, it's nice and quiet because after all, it's a real German car, not that wannabe German Model Y. <laughs> Look, Mjösen is still calm, so that's good for consumption. Uh, the ID4 GTX had 221 watt hour per kilometer. We have 219 right now, but we have to go uphill. So, can we beat the ID4 in consumption? We will see. Look, we have 14%, and I just discovered something. In the navigation here, if you click there and wait for the lag, the click there. You can then see that the car estimates we will arrive at 10%. Ah, just wish it was slightly more visible. All right, we're back at the starting point. So, uh, yes, like I mentioned earlier, we, for some reason, get less kilowatt hour, almost 10 kilowatt hour lower than normal here. So I already emailed uh, Volkswagen about this, asked them what's up with this. Uh, is there something wrong with the car or what's it? But anyway, so based on this test now, we get uh, a little bit over 400 kilometers of range. It should be closer to 500 kilometers of range. All right, it's been a couple of days now since I did the range test. And um, well, it turns out that that uh, ID5 GTX I had, had a faulty module. So it had 10 kilowatt hour less capacity than it's supposed to have. And then here we have another ID5 GTX. Uh, Merle, they just have to have, an, to have many of these available. So we swapped the cars and we already done the range test. I mean, we measured the, the, the consumption. Uh, so we only need to measure the capacity because I never want to know the capacity because from what I heard, this battery is slightly different than the one in the ID4. So I don't know, different manufacturer, different cameras or something like that. So that's why we need to spend the t extra time of measuring the battery capacity. And I will show you just another normal day here at Circle K. We have <laughs> trucks, electric trucks charging. You see, they actually park quite well because they only take roughly one spot each. There's another one, yeah. <laughs> you see, yeah, see, we still have space for other uh, regular smaller cars to park here. Huh? How about that? And also, see here, this is a 50 kilowatt. That guy doesn't want it, but here we have also another high power charger still available for use. All right, anyway, you guys didn't want to see this one. You guys want to see the stats on the car. We just finished charging and according to display, we have 100%. You can see also here 100%, 96% in the BMS. So you see the car keeps a 4% buffer. Okay, we should leave now, but here, the car now estimates 73.4 kilowatt hour available energy. And then I don't know about this one, uh, this is just a constant, seems like. Supposedly we can get 78 from it. Uh, why are we not getting it? This car is relatively new, I can show you here. If you go to status. So this is the odometer, 2,268 kilometers only. So yes, we're gonna reset this one, like this. And now we will measure, well, actually, yeah. And then let me just check here, the, since charge should, should stay there. It should reset once we start driving. So now the plan is to drive north. Uh, oh, oh, the HVAC is on. Oh, stop, stop, stop. The plan is just to drive. Oh, the lag though. Okay, I had to configure everything here. Uh, we will just drive north because uh, we have low traffic. Drive back and forth. Uh, I don't need to follow a 90 test or 120 test strictly, but I don't want to hammer too hard. So I'll probably cruise at, I don't know, 90, 100, 110 kilometers per hour over here, but not 120. Just take it easy, avoid hard acceleration, and then we try to measure the battery capacity. We've been driving for almost two hours. So the weather today is not as nice as yesterday. Well, actually, no, it's several days ago. Yeah, I forgot. But um, now we're down to 50%, slightly below 50%. And yes, it could seem like we won't get 75 kilowatt hour like the ID4. So we'll get something like 73 maybe. Yeah, right. So I'm just cruising at 110-ish kilometers per hour. And um, yeah, we will also check the distance error. So I already checked at the checkpoint at Dahl. So I'll do all the calculations and tell you guys, because this is a slightly different, I mean, it's a different car, 
Well, I mean, it's the same uh, class, right? Uh -huh. In, uh, but it's a different object. So we have to also measure the, the distance error. It's not relevant for this test, but uh, I probably have to also redo 1,000 km challenge. We are now back at Ionity and uh, I checked the distance here against the distance when I passed here earlier. And I counted that this car underreports by 0.5%, whereas the other car underreported by 0.7%. Difference could be in tire pressure because they have exactly the same tires, but um, alright, okay, whatever, let's uh, continue the trip. We still have to drive a while. Uh, well, I can show here we have 43%, so we have to go down to almost uh, zero. We are now at Dahl, we're done with the test. So, what was all this all about? Um, with the previous car, there was a problem with it, one module was kaput or something. And then when I did the range test, I measured 65.6 .6 kilowatt hour. And also once I got uh, scan my test, uh, um, car scanner up and running, the OBD tool, and I got the right variables in there uh, with some tips from one of my followers, I could see that even at 100%, the car estimated roughly 65 kilowatt hour. So it corresponds with uh, what I was actually measuring. But then with this car, we get the more correct number. And I measured to be 73.4 kilowatt hour. So with that kind of capacity, we actually get quite decent range here. 477 kilometers or 367. Those range numbers are very good for a crossover. This size, fairly spacious car, never compared to against the Model 3 because that's a different class. Um, but yeah, um, and also this battery now is charging way faster than the faulty battery. But you see, uh, with this one, uh, I didn't notice it right away. If, you know, it was just a coincidence that I actually did a full uh, range test uh, to measure the whole battery. So if I would just do a, a, a consumption test back and forth, then I wouldn't notice there was something wrong with this battery. Uh, but uh, it was a coincidence that I found it. And you see, at least for this one, the Volkswagen or maybe the MBB cars, uh, even if the battery is faulty, first of all, there is no notification, no error message, no notification in the screen that something is wrong. If this was a Tesla, the, the Tesla would tell you maximum charge level has been reduced, uh, maybe contact service or something. Um, could seem like um, maybe the, the legacy automakers, they don't take in account uh, corner cases if something would be wrong. And also I've seen this problem with the Mercedes EQC. That one also had a faulty module, uh, but with the EQC, I would just drive normally and then roughly at below 20%, 15%, the range and the percentage start dropping like crazy. So that was actually kind of bad because then you, if you will travel somewhere and you think you have enough range, then suddenly you get caught up with your pants down and you might run out of juice. Of course, there's something wrong, but in this case here, with a Volkswagen, uh, there's something wrong, obviously. The car actually knows it, the BMS knows about it. And then at least for this one, uh, the percentage goes more linear, as if there's nothing wrong. So I guess that's a good thing in the bad thing here, right? But I'm not defending it. I, I say that it should be like Tesla, where it tells you something is wrong and then you can uh, contact someone and uh, get it fixed because in the Mercedes case and in this case if you don't know about this you might be driving around with a branch banking new car with a faulty module a battery error and you have significantly reduced um, capacity like this one well it wasn't um, it was actually by the end of the day it wasn't it wasn't 10 kilowatt hour it's more like uh, seven eight kilowatt hour but that's still quite significant it's roughly 10 percent of the battery so but now it's all good right except for that i have to redo 1000 kilometer challenge because by the time uh, i send the email to uh, mölle uh, volkswagen and by the time they responded with a the car then i managed to do a 1000 kilometer challenge and it needs to be redone because the car, this car now charges a lot faster we have also a more range which means that we might be able to skip specular 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 so yes um this extra test here, just for the ranges, I just simplified it uh, to just correct for it. Took a whole day <laughs> and then 1000 km challenge would take yet another day. So uh, thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon and for watching my videos. So uh, if you want to A, B, C, always be correct, it's going to take a long time. 
So that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.